Welcome to our series of kayak fishing intros on how to fish and how to use your fish finder effectively on your kayak. Basically what we'll do is we'll run through a series of YouTube clips and videos showing you the different stages of fitting a fish finder, using it correctly, identifying what you see on your fish finder and basically making you a lot more competent on your kayak with a fish finder. Today what we'll do is we'll touch on fitting the fish finder. So basically we'll run through everything you need to fit on your fish finder onto your kayak. Uh, this, this can be done at home, this can be done by your nearest dealer or your, your distributor, but it's, it's a fairly simple process. The most important thing is to make sure that you have the right tools and obviously the right bits and pieces. But firstly, the tools that you'll need to fit your fish finder are pretty simple. You'll need a drill, uh, probably a grinder if you're going to do some cutting, and a screwdriver. The transducer we mount in one simple way. The most important thing is to remember is how we glue it in and making sure that we have no air trapped underneath the transducer. In your, in your battery box you will get a template which you'll put to mark where you're going to fit the battery box. So it's simple, you put the template and you draw around it as you can see in the footage. As mentioned, all stealth kayaks have a fiberglass fish box. We are cutting into the wall of the fish box to have access to the hull of the kayak. The reason we do that is, as mentioned earlier on, you do not want any, trap, any air trapped between the transducer and the hull itself. So we have direct access to the outermost skin of the kayak and that is where we will be mounting the transducer. Our next step is to, to glue or mount the, tra the transducer itself. This is just a standard transducer you get with most fish finders. It is a transom mount, but the transom mount works effectively through the kayak, no problem. What we do is we find an area where it will sit flat on the hull of the kayak, so you can see. It sits flat, and that is where we're going to glue it. We'll mix some glue, put the glue onto the bottom, and stick it straight down to the hull and leave it to dry. You'll see here we're basically given coverage of glue all over the transducer, making sure that there's no gaps and no air. You'll see once it's stuck down with the glue, the most important thing to do is to make sure that number one, it's facing down and not up the side of the kayak. And number two, that there's no air trapped between the transducer and the hull of the kayak. So you have enough glue on the bottom, you push it down firmly enough so that you move the air pocket out from underneath the transducer. When um, gluing the transducer down, it's important to know that we use an epoxy glue. This is a little bit slower, slower drying glue, but it sticks very effectively to the hulls. As long as you prepare the surface where you rub it a little bit with sandpaper, just make it a little bit rough, the transducer itself will stick there quite nicely. Just try and stay away from using things like silicone and, and prefer to use a uh, type of epoxy, whether it be a five minute epoxy or a slow drying epoxy, but the epoxy glue definitely does a better job with the transducer. When you uh, decide to screw your battery box in, use a screwdriver very slowly or a battery drill also on, on very slow so that you don't tear the fiberglass and screw it in very gently until obviously it's secure. Now that we've fitted the battery box and glued in the transducer and allowed the epoxy to dry, you run the transducer cable through the top of the battery box where there's actually a little slot or hole for it to go. And what we'll be doing now is spiral binding or connecting up the cables neatly into inside the, the, the fish hatch of the kayak so they don't get in the way while you're fishing. On some of the units you have a separate power cable from the transducer cable. So in this case you'll watch what we'll do is we'll spiral bind the two cables neatly together and run them along here so you can see how it all works. There's a small battery like this, generally say as you can see it's similar size of your fist. It's a 1.7 amp hour battery and it fits very snug inside here. Just like that, nice and snug and out of the way and the Velcro keeps it secure. One of the, the things we have learnt when it comes to fitting a fish finder onto our kayak is that all your, your power cables on a fish finder are generally very, very thin wiring. And with the nature of a fishing kayak and the amount of water and sort of splash and, and moisture we get, these little cable, cables often suffer from what you call the black death or corrosion when the the, the wiring itself actually goes black and then it stops your fish finder from working. So what we've done here is we've joined the thicker cable onto the thinner cable using a solder so that hopefully you won't get the, the black death or the corrosion on the end of here. And after that what we'll do is we'll put a bit of heat shrink, a little bit of heat shrink over the join and we will heat that, which will shrink the heat shrink like that around the join to keep it 
moisture off and stop it from corroding. And once we've done that, we will use a bigger piece of heat shrink and we will heat shrink both the cables together so that you seal them completely from water. If you don't have a heat gun at home, you're allowed to use your wife's hairdryer, just don't get caught. Here's obviously your connector to the battery. Here's we'll plug the connector into here. And we will solder this connection on, just like you can see there, we've, it's been soldered on. Once again, the reason why we're soldering it on is to try not eliminate too many of the wires. In other words, keep all the wires intact, not cut them or break them by crimping them. So we're gonna solder it on and that hopefully gives you a better end join as well. So now that we've finished mounting the battery box and the transducer effectively, we have done the cables, we'll seal, seal them off nicely, make, nicely, making sure they're waterproof and protected from moisture. We've soldered the ends on. All we do is plug the battery in and we're ready to go. The last phase of fishing a, fitting a fish finder is the mounting of the fish finder to the lid. Either you're going to mount it into a flush mounted lid or you're going to do the old style where we use Velcro. Basically you'll run through both styles for you quickly and you can decide or you can choose what you think will be the best for you. The first thing we do when we decide to fit a fish finder onto your ski, if you're going to fit a flush mounted lid, which is like this, the reason why we call it flush mounted is because your unit is actually being flush mounted into the lid, which keeps the, the plugs on the back of the, of, the, of the unit out away from the moisture and away from the dampness. This, in my, in my opinion, is the most effective way, purely because your plugs are away from the water. There's no splashing onto the back of the plugs and you still get to see your the screen quite effectively. So what we do is we change the splash strip on the front of your, your hatch lid. We change it to a Velcro system like this. You'll see the, the Velcro opens. and allows you to remove the, the old flush lid. And we take the flush mounted lid, put it in position, and Velcro it on. Now you're ready to use your finder. What this will allow you to do is if you don't intend on using your fish finder, you can actually change, change the lids itself. You can use your old lid, leave your fish finder at home. Naturally, obviously, before you carry on, you're going to plug your power cable into the unit so that the unit works. Another item that you, if you, you'd need to purchase when you purchase your fish finder, if you're going to do this fitting of a flush mounted lid, is the lid itself with a flush mounted lid. Basically, what we do here, you have your, your standard lid. We fit the Velcro onto the front, as, as you've seen before, for the interchangeable lids. So your Velcro will come onto the lid like that. Then what we do is we take the appropriate unit, and this is where you'll have to use your, your intuition, and make your own template of the outside of the unit. Using that template, you then cut a hole like that, where your fish finder will fit flush. So in this case, this unit will fit flush into there. The way we glue the unit into here is using Sikaflex or if you've got a very good quality silicone, basically silicone around the edge, hold it down, leave it to dry and you're A for away. Your other way of mounting the fish finder is sort of the old traditional way that we used to do. This one, as I said, you have the, the plugs exposed, exposed to the moisture and the water and the splash. So in my opinion, not really as effective as the flush mounted lid, but I'll show you how we do it anyway. First thing we do is you'll take a a little bung or something that you can seal the hole with and we'll mount, mount that into the lid. The reason why we do that is the power cable or the transducer cable can come through the hole. If you're not using it, also the bung can close the hole. So your power cable or your transducer cable will come through the hole. This mounting bracket, which comes standard with any type of fish finder, will then get mounted onto a piece of fiberglass or a piece of plastic or anything you want. So you mount that on with some screws just like that. So that's what it would look like securely mounted. Then what we do is we take some Velcro and we, we glue some Velcro onto the back of the plate and onto the lid. And then naturally you have a removable base plate as we call it and you'll be able to Velcro it on and off the kayak as you go fishing. So you can take the unit off when you're going through the surf or coming in, put in your hatch or your back hatch and then when you can get out there Remembering that this is mounted to here, when you get out the back, stick it on, pull the cables through and plug it in. When you're finished, 
take it off and put it in the back hatch. So this is your removable Velcro system which works. It is quite effective but obviously you've got to look after your plugs, your power plug and your transducer plug a lot more because of the spray and the moisture.